I'm not a tournament player, but I am what I call a so-so pro. A high... <laughs> oh, word? All right. Yeah, sure. Anyhow, you might not want me to watch this video, but content for the content gods are in. Also, maybe maybe it's just the title and the thumbnail. Maybe the title and the thumbnail is clickbait, but once you get to it, it's actually just a normal video. A lot of people do stuff like that. Miniac Age of Sigmar, here we go. This guy, yeah? Can we do a theater mode? What do you have to say? Miniac, what do you got to say about this? Grab your pitchforks, heat up those fingertips, because we're about to get a little spicy up in here. All right, I'm in. I'm in for spice. That was a fun little intro. This thing's too loud, though. The last year, I played 10 different miniature war games, and of all 10, I like Age of Sigmar the least. Okay, likes it the least. Maybe this is just like an opinion piece. The game's not for everyone. Also, let's see these other games. My perspective is someone who hasn't played any of these games, except Age of Sigmar. I'm the perfect person to react, right? Are all these games, like, kind of, uh, small? Maybe not A Song of Ice and Fire, but Marvel, Kill Team, Blood Bowl, Warhammer Underworlds, these all seem like, like skirmish games, not like big army games. Well, then maybe we're just gonna, we're gonna agree to disagree because in his opinion he likes skirmish games, and someone tricked him into thinking that Warhammer Age of Sigmar was a skirmish game. It's not. It plays terribly, under 2,000 points. He basically just shouldn't do that, right? And maybe he fell for the meme. As of the recording of this video, I've played seven games of AOS 3.0 and another 15 to 20 of prior versions. Okay. Is Age of Sigmar a terrible game? Why do I keep playing it live on stream if I don't like it? Link in the description. We play Thursday evenings once. What's he playing here? Castellai Dynasty versus, what's this? What's this stuff? He plays Soul Blight. He's playing against Doc. Oh, okay, okay. This is definitely not a 2K game. It's a 1K point game. He runs Castellai. One of his friends plays Doc. He plays Grow League, so builds up to 2K. Oh, okay, okay. I Before I even hear the man's complaints, I think I'm starting to understand why he would have that position. Looks like a Path to Glory game. Yeah. He hasn't played 3rd to 2K points, but that's the game this question and more over the course of this video. I'll start with my weakest point and then end on my strongest point, just like we learned in high school. Ooh, start with the weakest point, go to the strongest point. Okay, word. Can I cheat? Can I look at the bottom here and read what they are? Um, so what would be the weakest point? Probably the priority roll, right? That's the weakest one. I don't like double turns. I don't know how to play the game yet. That's got to be the go-to weakest point. I'm calling my shot. Are you happy, Mrs. Jensen? I'm still writing argumentative papers, but instead of it being about my long cutting job, it's about Chill. miniature war games. Chill, I'm not your In teacher. In my head, it sounded more impressive to be writing about plastic toy soldiers, but now I'm not so sure. I'm Bro, me and Miniac. Adults, old, right? I don't know how old he is, but we're both talking about plastic soldiers. There's a camaraderie there. I'm okay with it. Making this video for those who are interested in Age of Sigmar as a- Yeah, it looks like he's playing Castellai Dynasty, like cavalry all in, super plays into priority. Get those charges if you don't, you super lose. Not a lot of chaff. And then small games as well. Okay. So it'll give them an idea of how the game will feel for a somewhat beginner. As a reminder, this is just my opinion. Feel yeah. free to share your agreement or disagreement in the comment section below. So people I will, except not the comment section. This video. I was wrong. I thought the weakest point would be priority. It's list writing. Really? List writing is difficult? Well, okay. I'm gonna be, let's be really charitable here. Um, he hasn't played the game a lot. To a new player, it's probably daunting to write a list for a war game. Right? So this is, this is like a fair point. It could be. This isn't like Dungeons and Dragons where you open the book and it's just like how to build a character. One, two, three, four, you know. You gotta get the GHB for that. Me in this game is very confusing, especially as a beginner. As far as I can tell, there is reasonable. no section in this book that explains how to construct an army list from start to finish. That is true, because it, oh. I was about to tell him that that's correct. What you're looking for is here, in the, in the person who plays the game handbook, AKA the general's handbook. That's where this, that's where that is. It's not in the core book. In fact, in the, 
you know the free core rules you can download from their website? It explains everything, but it doesn't like put it in a nice little organized package, right? The nice little organized package is in the General's Handbook. That's where you find it. So if he's cutting to the General's Handbook, he must already know that that's where the place is for that. Apparently, that's supposed to be the purpose of a battle pack, like yes. this shiny new General's Handbook for Correct. 2023. Assuming you've already picked your Grand Alliance and Faction, the first step would be to pick a sub-faction, if applicable, then a battle pack, and then how many points you want to play. Then your army must contain some number of battle line units, normally two to three, and mm -hmm. a leader model who is your General. As far as actual model limitations go, that's it, but we're not done yet. After that, you need to pick a grand strategy, which is determined mm -hmm. by your battle pack, yeah. and also a triumph, which is only used if your opponent has more points than you. After yeah. all is said and done, you have to consider fitting your units into war scroll battalions. I would do that much earlier than this. Aliens, which are formations that give your army buffs, and yeah. they used to cost points, but now don't cost points, and there are generic ones for everyone to use, and mm -hmm. also faction-specific ones, and there's just, there's just so much going on, and it's hard. That's seven things. Is that really, is that so much? You have to do seven things when you're writing an army start to finish. I gotta consider that I'm in the soup of like already playing this game and he's like uh, talking about from a new player perspective. That, that didn't sound that crazy. You pick your army and then you're already on step five basically because you always play at 2k points. You don't, you don't do this. And then you just play with whatever the most recent GHB is, right? So all five of these first things, it's really just pick your army and pick your sub-faction, right? It's not really five things, it's, it's basically two things, right? I haven't played a lot of other war games, but this is less complicated than 40k. Perhaps he also hates 40k, though. If he does, maybe this is, maybe this is fair then. I'm gonna assume he hates 40k as well. Percussive Scruff, thanks for the tier one, I appreciate it. 14 months. Almost entire year, thanks a lot. Things you have to do for every war game ever. It sound look, I haven't played a lot of other war games, but it seems to me that this is probably what you have to do for every war game, I assume. Yeah, he did say this was his weakest point. Let's not let's not batter him. Let's not smash him on this, right? His greater point, I think, is good, because Games Workshop doesn't like doesn't spell this out like super great for new players, although the GHB does. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm checking the tapes. Give me a tape. I'm opening up the GHP here. And we take a look at the tail of the tail. Some of them may be involved with exotic stuff, like dark matter. Some... And ABC News Brief, brought to you by Michelob Light Beer. Now from Washington, Sander Van Oker. Okay, uh, Sander Van Oker. Tapes have been checked. So this is the GHB. Battle pack pitched battle. Yeah, this is how you build your armor. So you get started. Uh, agree to points. Pick a faction, record your details, right? And then here's the points limit. So here's what, okay, I need one to six leaders if I'm playing 2K, three battle line. You know, you just follow the chart. You just do that, right? And then, you know, faction, battlefield roles, battalions, fill out your army roster, and then finally grand strategies. You do some enhancements and stuff, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think this is like that. I don't think this is like a crazy bad presentation on how to make an army. I suppose it could be better. Yo, I should just do a lort. I should do a one minute video, short, that's like Heiwo's steps to building an army, right? No. If he's about to start shitting on the app, I will not defend it. And I'll just tell him he's right. I'm not here to say he's wrong about everything. I'm here to just comment on it, right? The app is shit. It just is. I agree. But the same cannot be said of the online list building tool for Age of Sigmar. Why is this process not written down somewhere? Why? It is. It is written down somewhere. It's written down in the GHB. In fact, you showed a picture of it in your own in your video. Grand Alliance for 2023. Yeah, you, you showed a picture of it. This is where it's written down, this process. What do you mean, why isn't it written down somewhere? You acknowledged that it was. Anyway. Between the web app and the phone app, why is there just so much stuff in the list building process outside of what's actually in my friggin' list? Your guess is as good as mine. Before we move on to the next point, let's hear a brief- Outside of your list? I don't get that. What does he mean by that? It means he just wants to add units and not do anything else outside of that? That would be a boring, simplified game, wouldn't it? I guess I like having a bunch of options. I think having a bunch of options is fun. 
<laughs> L plus ratio plus your old. I mean, he got me. He got me there. He doesn't think battalions or enhancements are part of his list, I think. Oh, well, they they for sure are. You're writing them down on your army list, right? Like you wrote battle regiment. You wrote the battalion down. You wrote your little enhancements down. And so they're written on your army list. So to me, that means they're in your army. But maybe, I don't know. I don't, that can't be what he means. Because it doesn't make any sense. Can't be what he means. A sponsor for this episode is... Video sponsor. Ooh, that's a long sponsor. I should get me some sponsors like this guy has. Look at him. He's got a whole ass sponsor in here. And I bet that sponsor's paying him money. I gotta get me some of those. No matter what I say about Miniag's video from now on, he's technically owning me. Because I don't have a sponsor and he does. So, you know, consider that. There's just so much stuff in this game. Bloat. Age of Sigmar replaced Warhammer Fantasy Battle because the game was very complicated and that caused the player base to dwindle. Where there was a lot of other reasons why it replaced Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but we do not need to get into that in this video. Where AOS started out in version 1 was absolutely a simplification, but that game was even more of a dumpster fire than this one. And so See, on, here we agree. First edition, before it had points, AOS was a dumpster fire. It was trash. I agree with you, Miniac. We can shake hands. More of a dumpster fire than this one. And so over time, at each revision, the game became more and more complicated. It included more and more. Well, it got a lot better. The game became a lot better. Maybe his complicated is my game became better. And maybe that's just where our opinions are going to diverge here. Our stuff like War Scroll Battalions, Grand War Scroll Battalions were in 1st Edition. Like, armies had War Scroll Battalions at launch of 1st Edition, so that's not true. In fact, War Scroll Battalions have been greatly simplified as the years went on. So this is, this is not a good point, because it is the opposite of true. ...complicated and included more and more stuff, like War Scroll Battalions, Grand Strategies, Battle... Grand Strategies were added later, and it did increase complexity, true. ...tactics, endless spells, Command points and... Command points were in first edition at launch as well. The simplicity of... Okay, so like, you mentioned four things, and two of them were in launch first edition. So, really it's just grand strategy and battle tactics. And, oh no, endless spells. Those five things. I don't know, you're, you're padding your list, I think. Needlessly verbose. Having recently read through the whole rulebook front to back, it was exhausting how many times I had to reread sections, scratching my head as to why they felt the need to use 100 words to describe something when 20 could have done just fine. My favorite example of that is here. A unit with the wizard keyword on its war scroll is a wizard. Mm -hmm. Your game shouldn't have to live in a world where stating this is necessary. What? You have to state stuff like that. These are rules. What do you mean? I, I don't understand this. I'm a magic player, okay? Maybe I'm just from a different world than this guy is. The goal of a rule system is to be specific enough so that there is no such thing as rules as intended. There is only rules as written. Sometimes you need a lot of words to make a clear rule. If you don't have precise rules, everyone's going to argue about fucking everything. And even worse, even if you're not like an arguing person, if your rules are imprecise and just kind of whatever, then it's hard to determine what they actually really mean if you give a shit. Like, there's no such thing as rules as intended if your rules are good enough, right? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get this complaint. He seems like he's on the way to start being like, um, everyone's adults here, everyone should just play by what they assume the rules to be without really knowing. Because the only ones who would ever have a problem with that are sinister rule-twisting angle shooters, which is totally not the case. But Scott, if GW doesn't do this, people are gonna abuse the game! Why are we still here? Just to suffer? In my opinion, the core rules should be written for normal people, and the- Okay, like the wrongest possible take. One percenters can deal with the added reading and some other document freely available online if they want to be annoying pedants. However, that might make my next point even worse. Okay, and we're right on to the next point. All right, post-production lore corner. This is a point we were supposed to agree on. If he only made it better and differently, Games Workshop is straight up bad at writing rules. Historically speaking, among games, they have been the laughing stock of people who give a shit about clear, concise, well-written rule systems. They've improved greatly, and right now is by far the best they've ever been at it, 
but there are still so many great points he could have been making here. Dunking on Games Workshop rules is the broadside of a barn, and Miniac shot three times and somehow missed. He chose, defining keywords is somehow bad, arbitrary length of the rules section meme, and thorough rules are only to stop that guys from willfully misinterpreting for an edge. Just about the only flat wrong takes you could have with their rules. Amazing. I mean, he showed a lot of games at the start of his video. He's got to be some kind of gamer. He must have come across a bunch of rule systems, right? From Dungeons and Dragons to other war games to Magic the Gathering. Like, why does he want shorter, looser, wishy-washy rules that just don't ever explain edge cases or write anything super clearly? This isn't about angle shooting. Are you guys, like, pondering orbs? Uh, ooh, how do we resolve things if two things happen at once? It came to me in a dream, that's how you handle simultaneous effects. What if one thing says you can do something, and another thing says you can't do something? Which one wins? I guess you don't want the rules to explain it to us. Would you just want to roll a d6 and whoever rolls higher gets to decide how terrain works in the whole game? Like, what do you mean? Like, what if you have an artifact, and it lets you cast a spell, right? And you give it to someone who's not a wizard. Can they unbind? Who the fuck knows, I guess, right? Like, you would rather no one know the answer to that question, or you could have the artifacts say that they gain the wizard keyword, which makes them a wizard, right? And then they can. Then you, then you don't even... These, I thought these points were supposed to be getting stronger. Rules for this game are spread out everywhere, from the core rule book to significant rules in army books, the mm -hmm. general's handbook, which changes the way the game is played once every six months, True. to white dwarf magazines? What? Finally, hey, we can reach across the aisle. I'm shaking your hand. I'm shaking your hand. Physical magazines in the year of our Lord, whatever the fuck year it is, even five years ago, I agree. Yeah, you shouldn't be writing rules and crap like this. Why are my factions rules in a subscription magazine? True, you Admittedly, know what? I don't know how True. often this happens anymore. Thank God for Wahapedia, a lovely free website that summarizes everything I need to know about the game in one spot. Or yeah. else I might just not know about a faction rule that I have, like deadly coordination, because White Dwarf issue number 471 is making... Wait. Hold on. I just thought, like, he didn't know about Wahapedia or something. If he does, then what's the point? Like, just use Wahapedia. It's got all the rules in it. What's the problem? If your point is that Games Workshop doesn't have an official living document, then that's a good point. They should... But to the player of the game, it makes no difference. They're just going to use the free website, right? They put the updated rules for their factions in the AOS app, but you still have to buy the book to have access to that info in the app. Yeah. They used to allow customers to buy a $15 digital version of the Battle Tome, but that is no longer an option, and you have to buy the big, expensive hardcover book to get access to the digital one. EPUB 3. If you're trying to stop pirating, this is not the way. The giant elephant in the room that we're not discussing regarding all this bloat is that it's really expensive bloat. If you wanted to play this game with your friend, you need to have a core rule book, which is 70 bucks. No. Wrong. Absolutely not. Once again, he's, he's padding these. I don't know. This is disingenuous. You don't have to buy a core book. You just don't. The rules in the core book are free from Games Workshop's website. They give them to you for free on purpose. Or a general's handbook, which is 50 bucks and gets updated every six months. So you do need the GHB. True. You have to keep rebuying that. Additionally, issue needs a battle tome for your factions. Correct. These are $55 a piece. Mm -hmm. While most companies are moving toward freely available rules, GW is digging in their heels, and sadly, I think this idea is here to stay. They give you the core rules for free, they give you all the points for free, and they give you all the war scrolls for free. The only rules they don't give you for free are the General's Handbook Seasons and Army Rules. They want you to buy one army book every three or four years when editions change, and a GHB every six months if you're a competitive player trying to keep up. If you aren't, you can dip out for a season or two or use your opponent's copy. Everything else they give you for free. I actually do not think that's so bad from the company everyone shits on for overcharging for everything. And that's just talking Games Workshop. If you want everything for free, everybody uses Wahapedia, right? I feel like this whole argument is pure spin, and it's been exploded by things that even he's admitted, like Wahipedia existing. Rulebooks and the like represent a revenue stream for a publicly traded company. 
They can't just give us rules for free without replacing that revenue with something else. True. They don't entirely have their customer's best interests in mind. It's partially controlled by someone else who cares more about the bottom line, the money. I'm not saying- Yeah, it's a company. Saying GW won't do it at some point in the future and that they're even doing anything inherently wrong. It's just a very obvious, frustrating boulder in the way of making this game truly accessible. Okay. So like this, this argument is like, give me everything for free and then somehow still make money, I guess. Bold. When building out a hero in Age of Sigmar, you have several options to give them buffs. Yeah. Items, command traits, spells, if they're a wizard, anything that's extra. Yeah, that's awesome. For the most part, it kind of seems like all of these options are meh, save for a couple. A oh, yeah. could be that none of them are costed at all, so they're all... F True. Okay, once again, hey, this is my second my second big handshake. This is, this is a good point. Remember I did a Stormcast video and I just took like all of their artifact and trait sections and erased everything and I'm like, this is your artifacts and this is your traits. This is the strongest point yet. I guess the points really are getting stronger. Yeah, they write they write shit artifacts that don't do anything all the time. And then like one good one. It's like embarrassingly bad. I, I fully agree with this point, exactly. Shit sucks and it's lazy. I don't know if it's lazy, maybe they ran out of time or something, but we anthropomorphize companies a little bit, so I guess I'll say, yeah, it's, that's lazy as shit. Free. Imagine having to come up with six to eight items for each sub-faction in this game, of which there are countless, and have those items be compelling buffs, unique and interesting, and also the exact same power level. Yeah, you're right. Imagine coming up with six artifacts and traits in every army book, and having all of them be, like, reasonably playable. Imagine doing your job. Just imagine, right? I don't, I don't buy his, this is impossible, this is too hard. It's simply too hard to do this. I don't buy it. It's harder than people think it is, but... That is extremely hard to do. The solution seems to be to make 70% of them all really bad or similar to other ones. Which no, makes... that's just what it looks like when you fail to do that. But, I mean, fair enough. Like, good point. They clearly struggle to do that, right? for a really lame experience. Their predecessor to Age of Sigmar, Armor Fantasy Battle, had similar categories for the buffs you could give to heroes, but right. they were all costed. You could give someone a 10-point thing that had a small buff or a 40-point thing that had a larger benefit. Yeah. Expanding the design space of the game allowed for a richer experience in that regard, but it is... Oh, that sounds more complex, though. I thought you didn't like complex. I thought we were removing complexity. I thought we didn't like that. Now we're adding a bunch of points in to make list building even harder? I guess, which one do you want? Do you want more complexity or do you want less? One of the great things about Age of Sigmar is that all your war gear options don't cost points. I don't know, I don't know if it even solves the problem. Okay, here's a 20 point artifact that's terrible and no one ever wants. And here's a 40 point artifact that's amazing. So you just take the 40 point one. Because why would you pay any points at all for a bad one, right? I don't know. Did this guy play fantasy? I'm not sure. I think it's actually a good thing they don't cost points. And the solution to this is writing better rules for them. That's all. It isn't always the answer. The same can be said for the various choices for units you have in armies. As a soul white player, I feel like a lot of my units aren't very usable. So it's a bit of an internal balance issue there. And True. apparently there are stats to back it up. This graphic is from a Metal Watch article by GW showing that in recent tournament games, the majority of Soul Blight models are simply not being used. This is a, he, this is a better this is a better point than he thinks it is because the way they determine internal balance crazy skewed to make it seem like more people use stuff than they really do. So the problem is the problem of internal balance is actually worse than this. That By the way, matter. huge shout out to individuals like Rob, the Honest Wargamer, for maintaining rigorous stats yeah, doing the stats and presenting them beautifully. True. They went a long way in helping me understand AOS from a balance perspective. And my friends and I love to pour over them. You can find Rob's channel below if you're into the tournament going AOS scene. The good news here is that because GW is tracking these stats, it's something they care about. I've heard that they've done a really good job on the last two army releases in this regard, but that still leaves many others languishing in the meantime, and it might be reasonable to expect this experience if you're picking this game up sometime now or in the next couple of years. The internal balance is like horrendous, but I don't think that's the fault of the system at all. They just haven't done a good job of it. Well, okay, I mean, but that's the game though, right? If you play Age of Sigmar, you're going to run into bad internal balance in your enhancements, in your rules, in your units. That's just a reality. So I think this is a, 
an entirely correct point here. When do you think he'll bring up the priority rule? Don't tell me he thinks that's the strongest point. Oh no. I forgot. I actually forgot about the priority rule until you brought it up. I thought it was going to be his first point. It's going to be the... He thinks it's the biggest point. Oh no. I guess I'll get a clip out of it. Don't, of years, don't tell me. Why does it take so long to fix this problem? There are 26 factions in this game. So likely be a while before all of these are brought up to snuff. What makes matters worse is when the developers are, say, halfway through fixing the game, the game will largely go through some larger change that resets its requirement to have all these armies adequately updated. True, An great example point. This could be updating the entire rule set for Age of Sigmar. With the long development cycle GW maintains, it feels like the issue of not being able to update your faction is fast enough to shore up differences between big gameplay changes you want to make is going to remain a constant forever. Yeah, this is actually a, a wonderful point. This is his best point. What section is this? Internal balance section? This is a great point. This is his strongest point. And that's true. They clearly write newer and newer battle tomes later and later on, right? They don't write all these at the same time. It's clear, right? They come up with new ideas and they're like, oh, we should add this to the game. We should add that to the game. And so the newer rule books just have it and the old ones just don't. And that's a problem. It's sort of a problem with their, like, pipeline, probably. They should be writing all of these at the same time. You can release them spread out if you want to do that. You want each of your quarters to have, you know, a bunch of sales in them, right? So you're, I guess you want to spread it out like that. But, yeah, you really should have a strong overseeing person. Have a few different teams. Everybody does all the new additions, rules for each of the little battle tomes, and they do them all at the same time. They compare and contrast. Left hand's talking to the right hand, you know. Overseeing balance person or person in charge of the game is like, okay, um, this is as good as I want that to be. That's as good as I want that to be. Let's see if these armies play well against each other. How's our balance looking like internal and external? They got all that figured out. And so then they're done with the rules. And then they can, you know, come out with the books Here's the next two this month. Here's the next two in two months. Spread it out. Yeah, I think this is just a this is just a great point. What are your rules writers doing after they they do that big lift though? Working on the next edition, and then when they're done working on the next edition, they start that huge process of updating 26 entire armies, which will probably take them a year or two. You're always working on the next stuff. You're always working on the next 26 books. 26 books is a lot to write. That'll take a long time. But that is a good point. Like, what if they finish everything, and then what are you paying your rules writers to just sit around and do nothing? Well, you, I mean, conceivably, they'd be working on the next stuff. I fear that factions in this game will always be in some fragmented state of armies designed for the current version and armies that have band-aids applied. Yes. There's something else True. to consider here True. that GW is first and foremost a model-making company. They don't make money. Uh, in the past, there have been quotes, or supposedly quotes, about that, but nowadays I think they're they're clearly a model company, but they're also a rules company because they sell you books. They are a model and book company. They're two things. They have factories that make them models, and they have factories that make them books. Uh, I guess they technically sell paint as well, but that's probably it's probably down the list. But yeah, they sell paint and stuff too. That's that's three things. If you wanted to be a real content creator, you'd put Miniac in the title of the stream. Eh. I mean, in the YouTube version of this, maybe, but acting like Black Library isn't one of the biggest and most money-making fantasy sci-fi publishers is wrong. Yeah, that too. Holding objectives, achieving your battle tactics, which are goals you select each round, and accomplishing your grand strategy, which is an overarching goal for each game. Yeah. Every single scenario which W calls battle plans reads almost identically. There are some number of objectives on the board to capture, and you get points based on how many you control. One. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's different numbers of objectives. They're in different positions. Some of them arrive sooner or later. Some of them move around. You know, some of them are worth more or less points depending on what's happening. Some of them have funny extra rules. But I, I suppose, yeah, in the, if we zoom out to 30,000 feet back, every game has objectives. True. Is this a, is this a complaint? You know, tennis is a flat game. It's one it's one big rectangle, and you have a single ball, and you're, like, hitting it with a racket. Flat game. Soccer. Flat game. You got a ball, you kick it with your foot. Two goals. Every game 
is the fucking same. They're just trying to kick the ball into the goal. Boring. Flat game. <laughs> this, this feels a little zoomed out to me. A little oversimplified. One or two battle plans add a bit more to this, but the core remains the same in all of them. Surely there are more interesting concepts that could be introduced to spice up the gameplay a little bit. Oh, like Here's what? There's an idea for AGW. You could write a yeah. battle plan book and charge 40 bucks for it. Wait. Okay, okay. But what about battle tactics? No, no, no. Tell me. I, I would like to know, actually. Like what? I mean, actually, I really want to know the answer to this question, and he just, he writes it off as a joke. But I would like to know what his issue is. Like, like what concept, right? So there's objectives, there's deployment zones, there's battle tactics, which are all sorts of things that you can choose to do during the game to get extra points. There's grand strategies at the end of the game. I want answers. What, anything you add, he would complain is rules bloat. Grand strategies, battle tactics. There's just so much going on and it's hard. Okay, literally true, but push that aside. Um... Here's an idea for you, GW. You could write a battle plan book and charge 40 bucks for it. Yes, that's their business model. Their business model is selling you a book every six months. Uh, that's, that's, you found it. You discovered it. Wait, okay, okay. But what about battle tactics? I friggin' love the idea of battle tactics. A shifting objective that you get to pick as the player based on the current game state, and you can't pick the same one twice, which yeah. encourages strategic movement. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the execution is lacking creativity. True. They all largely boil down to me killing stuff or claiming objectives, which are kind of the same thing. Yeah, they are all like kill something or claim an objective or claim a terrain feature or, you know, whatever. To capture objectives, you need to have more miles on them than your opponent, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To do that, it's very reasonable that you would kill those models, thus achieving your battle tactic and True. also the goal of the battle plan in one fell swoop. True. It would be way more interesting if the battle tactics offered up different goals that didn't coincide with the ones already present in the battle plans. This way, it allows real room for strategic choices because you have alternatives if your opponent has a stronger board presence, say on turn two, and you need to retreat and recoup some points but you can't compete with them on holding objectives this very moment. Isn't that usually what happens, though? Like, your opponent gets the good board position, and then you get the good board position once you've taken it away from him, and then he takes the good board, and it's kind of a back and forth. There's a, there's a back and forth to Age of Sigmar games, like war, right? This does happen. You know, you get one point for one, two for two, and then a third for more than your opponent. So if you can't get more than your opponent... You can still usually get one or two, and then satisfy your battle tactic, and you're you're kind of chilling. Interesting if the battle tactics offered up different goals that didn't coincide with the ones already present in the battle plans. This way, it allows real room for strategic choices because you have alternatives if your opponent has a stronger board presence, say on turn two, and you need to retreat and recoup some points, but you can't compete with them on holding objectives this very moment. Well, you do have to do that. As a player in AOS, it's pretty easy to understand what your opponent is going to want to do on any given turn, so the decisions seem pretty straightforward. I'm going to capture points by killing models because in doing so, I achieve not only my battle tactic, right. but also the scenario objectives and also deny my opponent who wants to do the exact same thing. Yeah. The goals are in I don't know. There's a lot of I take this, you take it back. I take it, you take it back. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of making sure you're not overextending, you know, into a priority role or something like that and seeing how few resources you can send off to technically capture something, but it's like a sacrificial thing. I don't think it's shallow. I don't. He didn't say it was shallow, but I. I think it's. Maybe that's a bit of the implication here, since he's talking about simple. You know what your opponent is going to do. He said and flat gameplay. There's a lot of tactics anyway, though. Plain sight because everything just points to them, either literally or either because one achieves the other. When it comes to grand strategies, those are a bit different, but largely easily achieved. Oh, I disagree. Grand strategies are really hard. It depends on your army. Usually your grand strategy is, if you dominated the game, you get it, and if you didn't, it's hard. The interesting scenario that this creates in the game is that if you're not scoring the max number of points every single round, which is five, you're falling dangerously behind, because it's pretty easy to score all five points because of how everything pretty much just aligns. No, it's hard. It's difficult to score all five now. There's a lot you can do to stop your opponent from doing that. Depending on their army, it might be easier or harder to score all of them. And you can certainly come back. There is momentum in the game, right? 
Like there's for sure momentum where, ooh, you're winning and you're winning and your opponent is falling farther and farther behind, but there's a lot of catch-up mechanics in this game. And I don't know that you're scoring like all of them every time. I'm I'm surprised that in a casual game, they're scoring all of them each time. Because it's kind of, well, maybe... Maybe your opponent isn't doing stuff for you to not score them all. I'm thinking about tournament games, so maybe that's different. Related to actual gameplay, the actual fighting in this game feels very all or nothing. Generally, my friends yes. and I are always setting up for our important units to completely destroy an important enemy unit or cripple it entirely. Yeah. If that doesn't happen on my turn, it usually means that my unit is going to become completely destroyed or crippled this turn. Yes, yes, true. It's a very deadly game. Yeah. Age of Sigmar is a deadly game. Shit dies all the time. Everything does crazy damage. In other words, they want things to happen in the game. They don't want blob of 30 guys to fight blob of 30 guys. No one dies. Nothing happened. Okay, next turn. They don't want that. Especially at 1,000 or 1,250 points like they're playing. Oh, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting he's not playing like the actual game. He's playing tiny points. Nothing is balanced. Mm, yeah, I suppose that's even worse at those points levels. And that is Games Workshop's fault for tricking people into thinking the game is, like, balanced for those points levels when they're just not. Um, I don't want to pull that, like, it sounds bad for me to do the No True Scotsman thing. He's not playing the real game. It sounds like I'm doing that. And I don't mean it to. But um, the game is balanced at 2K, and it's not particularly balanced underneath that. You want to say after you played a 1K tournament, the 1K isn't that bad? Yes, but you are you are in a tournament. That's different. I'm talking about beer and pretzels don't really understand anything yet. They're new. They're just figuring things out. That's, that's like the... Because he's talking about new players. That's what he's talking about. I want Age Sigmar to have more of a back-and-forth experience instead of something that's so black and white. This creates a negative feedback loop for me and my friend. It definitely, that's, if I were to describe Age of Sigmar in one sentence, I would say it is a back and forth violent war game. A bunch of the battle tactics and a bunch of the way people play is like, I take all the objectives, then you take them all from me, then I take them all from you. It's weird that he would say that that's what he wants it to be, because it's very much what it is. Maybe he's, okay, he's playing at 1k. And so there's not, he's not playing with enough points for a back and forth because I'm assuming since they're new players, they just roll everything up into the middle of the table, get all their charges in, do a bunch of damage, and then they get countercharged because they're right there. You know, they put themselves right there, and then now they're dead. And you don't have the, that extra thousand to do stuff with. You're playing games so small that you don't have the men on the table to do back and forth. You just roll everything up, smash some stuff, everything's in range now, you get smashed, and then you roll priority to see who wins. That's got to be what they're doing. And when we try to do the big bad thing our units are supposed to do, and when it doesn't happen, it causes something of a feel-bad moment. Speaking of those, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's talk about Age of Sigmar's relationship with dice rolling. Mm -hmm. War games include dice, which introduces a fun risk factor into the game. Look, Games Workshop has a lot of rolling, right? So if he's going to say you roll too many dice, I guess it's a Games Workshop thing. You either like that or you don't. I guess my, my caveat is 40k has more, but if you already don't like that, then, you know, whatever. Oh, wait, this is, is this the last point? Here comes priority. That, some games lean away from it, but you can never get I'm away from it, it entirely. It's priority. Whereas games like Guild Ball try to design dice out of the game, the rule writers for Age of Sigmar try as hard as possible to include as many dice rolls in this game as humanly possible. Well, you also, all of your choices you make when you're building your army, you do so to reduce how much randomness you are subjected to. Like, why do you use all-out attack for plus one to hit? So that you're more likely to hit. Like, you're reducing that randomness. Even for, I'm sure he's going to start talking about priority because he hasn't talked about it yet, and he's a new player, like, complaining about the game. But, yeah, even priority. Why do people take battle regiment? So that you can kind of control priority. The reason that mechanic is good is because players have the opportunity to control it. If it was just random, like, it, would, it wouldn't it would be as good, right? 
Anyway. The Rule Writers for Age of Sigmar tries hard as possible to include as many dice rolls in this game. Yeah, and the players try as hard as possible casting to reduce spell their is impact. largely always 2d6. Mm -hmm. A different angle on casting spells in war games could be 1d6 plus some magical stat for the unit. You already have this. This way, there's always randomness, but better wizards have an easier time. Yeah, he just wants more spells more often. Fair. Okay. That constant then that's just his effect. opinion. Sometimes when you get a spell off, you have to roll again to see if the effect even happened. That's bullshit. Agree. So for AoEs, you have to roll an additional time. I think you should have to roll an additional time after the first one. The first one should just work, but eh, that's just me. Some units have built-in abilities that only go off on dice rolls, like Riders of Ruin. Why not just give me the ability for free and increase the point total of... Yeah, why not? Why not just have everything work always? Yeah. ...of the unit by a little bit? Roar, a monstrous rampage ability, has a very nice benefit, but only goes off on a 3-up, making it... Yeah, because it's overpowered. Even even working on a 3-up, it's overpowered, right? ...it feel bad when one player's dice rolls are hot and the others aren't. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry if I'm rolling well and you're not. I mean, that's a, that's a dice game. You can fail rolls, your opponent can win all their rolls, I suppose. When thinking about monsters, don't you account for always suffering from war and stomp, though? Yeah. That's what I think, anyway. It's like, when you're playing the game, you're like, okay, I'm going in there, that's a monster, he's gonna roar me. Chances are it's gonna work. So, I'm planning on that happening. And if he fails the roll, hey, great, I just got lucky. But in general, I just, I assume all my opponent's stuff is gonna work when I'm planning on what to do. Also, there's anti-monster tricks, depending on what kind of army you're playing, what kind of rules you want. If you don't want to get roared, you can play whatever Astral Templars or something like that. I don't know if this is a weak point exactly. It's just this, this, his tolerance for randomness is lower than mine, I suppose. Just play chess. No, I don't, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't have to go ridiculous with it. He just feels that there's too much randomness in this game, and and I don't, that's all. Like, we have different opinions about how much randomness you want. Like in Magic the Gathering, a 2-2 always beats a 1-1 every time. There's no rolling, right? In Dungeons and Dragons, you know, you roll a d20 to do basically anything, and sometimes it fails. So, different games, some games everything works perfectly, like chess or magic, unless your opponent interacts with you, right? And sometimes uh, games are are random. And this is one of those random ones. For me, these design choices create opportunities for more feel-bad moments. Either the opponent is frustrated that luck wasn't in their favor, or the player rolling the dice... That opponent needs to chill out. <laughs> it's a dice game. You gotta be okay with failing rolls. This is like a maturity thing. Hey, you know what? You're gonna roll that one sometimes. You gotta deal with it. Your opponent's gonna roll the one sometimes. You're gonna roll the one sometimes. Sometimes they just roll sixes. Um, not getting salty about dice rolls is one of the first lessons you probably should learn. If you're playing a dice game, I think. Or when my Cities of Sigmar friend, who has a lot of wizards, just can't seem to roll high enough with 2e6 to get any spells off. Let's talk about the ultimate feel bad hey, mechanic you got in Age Sigmar, though the double turn. In AOS, at the beginning of each round. Alright, I thought it was going to be his first point. I was wrong. It's his final point. He thinks that it's his strongest point. Interesting. All right, let's hear it. Um, both players make a priority roll to see who yep. goes first. If you tie, it seesaws back to the player who most recently did not have a turn. If you're wait, following wait along a minute. as Brown, both players make a... Hold on. Did I hear that right? In AOS, at the beginning of each round, both players make a priority roll to see... No, you don't do that in the first round. This is the critical piece of information that explodes probably everything that he's going to say right here. You do that in the start of each battle round after the first. The first one is in the player's hands. There's a little metagame that's happening, right? There's a little bit of tactical, I'm thinking, I'm planning, I'm affecting what's going to go on. That's happening before the game begins, right? Is how many drops your army is, if you're using a battle regiment or not. Whoever finishes deploying first gets to choose who goes first in the game itself. And because of that, it makes priority okay. It fully makes priority fine, I think. You get to control this. It's, it's in your hands. Now, if both players are one drop, yeah, you do have to roll off, but very often that's not the case. If you get to choose and you make your opponent go first, it means you line yourself up for the first 
possible double turn because they can't, right? Because they have gone first. Now you're going second, and then you roll priority. It can either be you go, I go, or you can get two. So you've lined yourself up for that. You've set yourself up for that. And your opponent knows that you've set yourself up for that, and they can play with that in mind. Because there's no, like, secrets here. It's all on the table, right? I just went first, so I know my opponent is probably going to try to double me at the end of the first battle round. So I need to play considering that. Like, okay, on my first turn, maybe I don't put everything straight into the center of the table and say, please win on a d6 roll, you know? If I win priority, I can still give it to my opponent. So if you want to go, you go, I go, you can do that, right? I don't, he wasn't trying to be sneaky here. He just, I don't think he was thinking about that because new players don't think about that. This is like a, this is an advanced player thing. Like brand new players, they interact with priority as if it were a D6 falling from the sky with a little Fulton device on it, like a parachute coming down. And it just lands and tells someone that they get two turns in a row. And they're, they're like, oh, oh, I just lost the game. This out of nowhere. I just So that's like a new player. That's what happens. And then there's a certain point where you're kind of learning the game. You're kind of getting a little better. And you realize, oh, the priority role is actually something I can play around. I can anticipate. I can kind of control with like battle regiment or when drops happen or things like that. And some people like to be casual they don't like to you know try too hard or you know they're just not like a very competitive person and that's fine and so you can play casual aos and if you play casual age of sigmar then people just get turns out of nowhere right and you randomly lose but you don't care enough to play around it in any way and so that just happens to you and at some point you have to make a choice like am i gonna play around this game mechanic, or am I going to just let it happen randomly, right? Yeah, there's a lot of depth to it, and also the priority roll is one of the first. reasons... Pardon me. Priority roll is one of the reasons why Age of Sigmar is so hard to play correctly. It's a difficult game to play competitively because of this, because you have to play around this. It's also a reason why um, the better player wins like 90% of the time, despite all the randomness, despite priority, despite charge rolls, despite... 2d6 spell casting and they don't go oh, my three up thing didn't work despite all the randomness he just complained about when we did stats on elo and looked at the difference in elo despite all that randomness somehow the better player kept winning and one of the big reasons for that is you have people that play like the double turn is a mechanic in the game that you can do something about and you have people that just roll it right and i, I, th I really think that's it and if, if the game was just you go, I go for the whole thing, it'd be so much easier to play it. At the top of three, I could probably just say, all right, well, you're going to go, and then you're going to do that, and you can get about that far, and then I'm going to go, I'm going to take those, and then turn four, same thing, and turn five, that and that, and I've won, and you can't do anything about it. Like, I can see to the end of the horizon, and it just we just know what's going to happen, probably. So we don't even need to keep playing. Like, it'd be so much easier to play the game if it was you go, I go. It's like people complain about bad draws and magic. Don't put bad cards in your deck. Easy. I, I know it's, it's more than that, but... Anyway, this is skill issue, the complaint. Make a priority roll to see who goes first. Yeah. If you tie it... Wrong. Also, uh, damn. All right, he's... It seesaws back... To he's a new player. He hasn't played the game a lot. I was expecting these. It's not... Who goes first? Notice he said... If each round, both players make a priority roll to see who goes first. No, it is not to see who goes first. So, first of all, the first battle round doesn't work like that, and that's very important. Second of all, it's not to see who goes first. It's to see who gets to pick who goes first. And this is also critical. This is super important. A lot of times, I win priority and give it to my opponent instead. Sometimes I don't take a double turn. And I give it to my opponent, and we keep going, you go, I go, because I want the turn three double turn instead. The point double turn, if you will, rather than the damage double turn, which is the turn two one, right? There's a lot of bonuses you get for going second in the game now, right? There's bonus heroic actions you can get. A lot of the battle plans have special things that you can do if you're going second in the battle round, i.e. you didn't just get a double turn. 
in the GHB proper, there's a lot of stuff that they often add in seasons, like the person going second in a battle round gets to remove an objective entirely from the table. And the person going second, remember, is, an, is not the person who got the double, right? So you get a double, and the opponent just takes an objective off the table. And it was the one you were going to go, so like, they can screw you. Or different ones they can activate. This one's worth more points now, and it's the one you won't be getting. And it happens right away, right? So there's all sorts of stuff, depending on what battle pack or battle plan or army you're playing or whatever, that you get to screw with your opponent who decided to go for the double. It's a give or take. And a lot of times you just don't want to. Uh, it's not worth it. You want to kick the can down the road. It's fine. One eternity later. You can get rid of endless spells. You can unbind spells. You have heroic actions. They choose a battle tactic, and then you, oh, okay, it's my guy's best day ever, so he's super durable, right? A lot of buffs last until your next hero phase, and so you cast some huge buff or some big defensive thing. That's going to last, even if your opponent gets a double turn, it's going to last through both of them. Spells you cast, Mystic Shield, stuff like that. You know, these are all things that you're doing to soften the double turn against you if you think it's coming, like you have all this stuff. In the movement phase, you got redeploy. You can screw with their charges. In the charge phase, you got monsters actions of your own. You have unleash hell to shoot stuff that's coming after you. In the combat phase, you're both actually fighting, so it really is you go, I go there. You have a lot of things to do on your opponent's turn. It's it's just shooting really that you only have like all out defense or maybe you know a lookout sir or some special role your army has, and all your stuff is buffed up. You know, a lot of times I have one priority. And I gave it back to my opponent because they got everything off, right? Like, I'm playing against Lumineth, and they Mystic Shielded. They get plus one armor to all their guys. They got the five-up ward on all their guys. And they got the Ethereal on all their guys. And I win a double. I just give it back to them. Because my double turn is now ruined because they're so durable, I'm not going to be able to punch through it. KO shooting on both. Yeah, there is. There are a few. Depending on your army, there's some stuff you can do in your shooting, opponent's shooting phase. True. So is a lot of his complaints really that he's too new to understand the complexity? I think so, yeah. Which is fine. That's not his fault. Perhaps that's Games Workshop's fault. Maybe we can blame them, right? They made a game that's really fun and on the surface seems crazy. But actually, a lot of it is controllable and there's a whole lot of skill involved in bending those crazy seeming rules to your will. So maybe the difficulty curve isn't smooth enough. Maybe that's their fault, right? Like take Path of Exile. If you jump into Path of Exile, you're going to be absolutely buried in systems upon systems upon systems upon systems. And you're gonna have no idea what the fuck is even going on. And that's like a problem with that game. Even though once you learn all those systems, it's a great game. The barrier to entry, complexity-wise, is too high. So that could be like a legitimate complaint about Path to Exile. In the same way that this, even though he's wrong about all this stuff, maybe that's not the point. The point is that the difficulty curve to dealing with stuff like priority is too high for new players. Like, maybe that's that. Personally, I hate moments like this in games. Dude, you're playing with 500 points. What is this? Let's be charitable. Um, he's playing in such tiny point value games that the double turn probably does just end games, right? Like, priority probably does 100% completely end a game. My man needs to play 2K games, first and foremost, I think. These tiny point value games just aren't particularly good for casual players, I don't think. I'm not a tournament player, but I am what I call a so-so pro. A high... <laughs> oh, word? All right. Yeah, sure. Hey, we all like to think that about ourselves, right? But in Age of Sigmar, he never plays 2K games, which is what all the mechanics and systems are balanced around. Doesn't use all the rules. Doesn't use all the rules correctly. He thinks writing a list is hard. He wants the core rules shorter, even if it would make them worse. And he complains about the double turn, which is chef's kiss. I couldn't come up with a more stereotypically casual AOS player than if I fed Facebook complaints to mid-journey, all right? There's nothing wrong with being a casual player, but let's not kid ourselves here. Some people are casual and they just like throwing some dice and whatever happens happens and they're having fun. It seems like you're not having fun. 
There's plenty of ways to get good that'll change things for you. And so you can do that or not do that. Obviously this is, this is like a meme video that tries to get people to react to it, which is what I'm doing, you know? But for the most part, I think considering how he's approaching the game, the feelings he has here are very reasonable, you know? And he had some like really strong points for instance, uh, let's see, he was talking about needless risk. That was a really bad point that he accidentally misrepresented a whole bunch of stuff in, uh, but that's, it, it clearly wasn't on purpose. The flat gameplay thing wasn't the greatest point. It was a bit super general, but maybe the other games that he plays that are skirmish have a lot more granularity to their different objectives or something. So maybe that could be the case. You know, Path of Glory has a lot of that. Internal balance was a great point in recap. The widespread rules point, um, he didn't have a good point, but there's like a good point that's close to that. So I'm going to, we'll count that because he's new. Um, and he was close to what the, you know, the white dwarf thing was a good point. The app is shit. Um, but he said you had to buy the core book and you just don't. And that was like a big linchpin on his whole thing is like you have to buy all these books but really you don't actually because the rules are free and the works against your point a little bit but he had other good points too and that was fine um game bloat it's true that mm, i don't know i don't think complexity has necessarily increased even from second to third besides battle tactics that's the only thing when he was talking about how the game got more complex over time and then like half of the things he mentioned were things that have always been in the game and in fact got less complex over time, like battalions and command abilities and stuff like that. I'm assuming that he just like wasn't aware of that and not that he was putting stuff that was purposely not true in there to like bolster his point by adding fluff to it. Based on everything else he said, I'm just assuming he didn't know that. So that wasn't the greatest point. And the complex list building thing, there's like a shadow of a good point there. Like Games Workshop doesn't hold your hand and walk you through list building. In, in like in an extreme manner, but they do do it and it's in the GHB. He even said like it's in the GHB and then later he's like, they don't do this. I'm like, well, they do. It's just in the place that you said where it was. And then he later on said that he wanted list building to be more complicated by adding all this other crap. So that was a wishy-washy one. I don't think it's actually that complicated. The priority role meme, I thought it was going to be first. It turns out he thinks it's his strongest point. It's in fact his weakest point because it's pure just a hundred percent skill issue he made no effort to i mean look he's got a he's doing a lot he's got a lot to do this man runs a content warehouse does a shitload of videos he puts them out all the time he plays a whole bunch of games it's hard to juggle all that right you can't be a so-so pro at everything if you're playing like 12 13 different games it's hard like people feeling like he does is games workshop's problem it's their issue because some of this stuff is just pure opinion. Like, I think it's too complicated when you're making an army. Okay. I think there's too much dice rolling in the game. Okay. It's pure opinion. Can't argue with that. I feel bad when I fail dice rolls. Yeah, hey, brother. <laughs> I feel bad when I fail dice rolls too. You know? Damn, how relatable, right? Um, double turn feels too strong. And Games Workshop has a, has a problem ahead of them. Because if they got rid of it, the game would be way worse. And you could see from probably turn two on to the end of time and just know who's going to win unless drastic things changed everywhere else in the entire game, right? It would require too much to, like the game would be so different without priority for the worse. But as a player, if they're going to keep double turns in the game, I'm going to keep taking them unless I don't feel like it because it's not the right choice to always take it. But, you know, I wish we could somehow get new players to realize that the game is very different to low point values. And the problems people have with the game, right? Taking two turns in a row, everything's a glass cannon, there's only so many objectives and you just kill people to take them, right? The problems people have with Age of Sigmar. For every 10 points you dip below 2k, those problems get worse and worse and worse and worse. Just run 3k so you can run 30 Chosen and Archeon. True, you know I played in a 3k tournament, shit was fun. Seems like a fine guy, he just doesn't like the game that much. I'm not trying to argue him into liking the game. He seems to not like randomness, he seems to prefer skirmish games. And he doesn't want to play a big army game at 2k. 
so it's probably just not like the best game for him. That's fine. What's his closing argument? Double turn bad. He's 100% liable. Look, I'm trying to... This is a hit piece, right? But also, you could you could find this information out if you really cared to, right? And if you're going to make a video, I don't like game. I think it, a little bit of research. He could have definitely reached out. Not to me, because I'm sure he doesn't know who I am. I'm small time. But he could have talked to... I mean, he talks about Rob the Honest Wargamer all the time. He put him in this video. He could have asked Rob, like, Hey, Rob. Um... I personally know you. And Vince, right? Rob, he knows two people who he could be like, hey, these are the reasons I don't like AOS. Tell me, like, am I am I way off base? Am I crazy? Or do I kind of have a good point in your expert opinions? Because Vince and Rob are both experts, you could argue, right? And they'd be like, play with 2K armies. All those other points values are a meme. If you're salty when you roll bad, grow up. And priority is a skill issue, get good. And that'd be the end of it. But making the video and then like going on their shows is good. That's good for getting people to watch stuff. So maybe that's just what he's trying to do. Which, I mean, that's probably a good idea. If he wanted to draw up views, why not 40k then? Because he wanted to do it about a good game. You know, he wanted to pretend not to like Age of Sigmar. If he did this video about 40k, everyone would just agree with him. <laughs> He'd be like, 40k is a trash game. And then 40k players would watch it and be like, yes. We agree. There's no controversy. It's just you telling people what they already think. Bro. You're such a huge channel. You can have the sound be just always negative 60, but you can do something like that. You don't have to destroy my ears like that. I see small channels that have like an intro that's insano loud, and then the rest of the video is fucking quiet. Um, you're too big to be doing stuff like that. I don't like it. Now you are wrong. Now this is a trash opinion. If your opinion is you think you can have intros and outros be 16 fucking decibels louder, than the meat of your video, then then your opinion really is trash. Thanks for watching. I'm Heywo, join my Discord if you feel like it. Buy a shirt, will ya?